Altegra has always been the sweet spot between price and performance for the sporty road cyclist. But does that continue with the new Altegra R8100 12-speed wireless group set? There is one massive thing to know before you spend your money. Is there? There is. Cool. Whoa. Well, we'll go through the new features in a bit, but I'm guessing that you're really here to find out how the new DI2 stuff performs. To give you some context, we've already reviewed the Dura Race 9100 group set, and I've been a long time user of the Ultegra R8070 group set. Yes. I think you are as well. Yeah. We're yeah. big fans of that one. It's safe to say that I like a bit of DI2 and disc brake action. Ultegra has always been closing the gap to Dura Ace with each new iteration, and my take is that they are now absolutely identical in terms of how they perform. Well, hang on, that's not just your take. Shimano say that as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you only need to look at Dura Ace R9100 if you want the name on your bike, or if you're, well, Particularly fussy about a few grams, maybe? Exactly, yeah. That is absolutely excellent news for those of us that don't need your race, because the bottom line is that you can get World Tour componentry at a semi-sensible price. Okay, so that's the basics, but let's dive a little deeper. Shimano have made some big claims about the shifting and the braking, with the former now being supposedly faster and the latter being better at not rubbing once you've kind of come off the brakes. That is a bug bear. Seeing as braking and shifting are the primary functions of a group set, that's where we'll start. Excellent. The shifting, well, Jamie, is hyper quick. The rear derailleur flicks the chain between cogs rapidly, and this is brilliant for reacting to accelerations in races, not that I race anymore, or just trying to drop your mates. We do do that. We do that a lot. One thing that continues to be a feature of DI2 is that the speed of the shifts doesn't depend on where you are on the cassette, so that's a good thing. If you're just flicking from the 16 tooth to the 15 tooth, that'll be done in the blink of an eye. But also when you're inevitably going up a really steep climb mm. and you need that 30 tooth ring, it'll save your legs. The old Hail Mary shift for that, exactly. that tiny gear. Although when in that gear, I always try for another one. Yeah. Compared to the Jura Ace rear derailleur, there is very little difference, but compared to the old Altegra DI2 derailleur, there is a slight improvement. The shift action feels smoother across the cassette, which I didn't think could happen because the old Altegra DI2 was fantastic. But realistically, the difference isn't like the one uh, we had when we went from mechanical to electronic. Mm. It's not that big, but no. it's still good. Yeah, an incremental improvement. Yes. Moving to the front derailleur, the difference from the old stuff to this new R8100 model is really noticeable actually. Shimano says that the speed of the front derailleur has been improved, but for me it's the power that I think makes yeah. the most difference. Hydraulic discs are now the dominant braking system in road, gravel, and pretty much all forms of cycling. The claim is that they offer more power and modulation than a rim brake, delivering these benefits in all sorts of weather whereas rim brakes do suffer some power loss in wet conditions. Especially carbon rims. Yes. Opponents of disc brakes point to the howl that is caused by contamination, as well as the supposed weight penalty. And don't get us started on Chris Froome. He seems to not get on with them at he all. He hates them. While we could spend a whole video moaning about disc brakes, they are the better system in our opinions anyway. Though I wouldn't say that they're needed to enjoy a ride. No, you can still have a great time on exactly. a set of rim brakes. Anyway, these new Ultegra brakes are absolutely fantastic. They've been powerful and easy to control, and they bedded in quickly. But most importantly, they've been quiet in the wet. Yeah, I will say that I put a lot of my uh, braking happiness down to proper frame prep absolutely. and fork prep. Um, I had my frame set on my last one aligned. Um, and I found that there was a 0.9 millimeter drop on the rear brake mount at the back end. Um, that sounds minor, but it's enough to skew a brake caliper to the point that your brakes would be rubbing after any period of braking. If there's one piece of advice that I can give you, either when you buy a new bike, upgrade your frame, or splash out on a new group set, it would be to get the brake mounts faced. And while you're there, get any threads chased because the bottom bracket probably needs it. And get that face too, you may as well. Personally, I think bike brands should be doing that from the factory, oh, really. God. Yeah, I know. Uh, especially when you're paying thousands for a frame yeah. alone. But the bike industry is famously lazy with their yes. tolerances and quality control as well. So if you want perfection, then yeah, 
go and get those things checked out. Yeah, it's something that you're gonna have to do. Let's head up to the front of the bike as aesthetically, the biggest change comes with the shape of the shifters. The body has been made longer and taller and both moves are ones that well, I personally like. Shimano says that it's due to feedback from the pros, but I suspect that they're just needing to fit the CR1632 coin cell battery in if each shifter, and that mm. played more of a role in that. With my medium-sized hands, I found the new shifters very comfortable. Mm. You know, it's a secure grip on bumpy roads. The button profiles have been altered and are now very pronounced. And I have to say, I had very few issues with the old levers, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the new levers are better. It, yeah, fewer missed shifts. As with the old model, there is plenty of free stroke and position adjustment so that you can physically tune the levers to your hands. Useful if you've got tiny hands. I don't have tiny hands. And then we have the new chain set. Well, personally, it's a new chain set. It is, it's a bit boxier. Yeah, a bit more kind of Asymm no, not asymmetrical, symmetrical. Mm. And it's a little bit heavier, but hopefully it doesn't fall apart. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping there's gonna be fewer cracks appearing in these. Though mm -hmm. Shimano does sell thousands upon thousands of chain sets every year, so yes. you're gonna get a few problems. <laughs> you are. So what's different from the old stuff? Well, there is the semi-wireless design to consider. You can run it with a wire from the battery to the shifters. And personally, I do this because you get like 50% extra battery life. Mm -hmm. The wireless tech, well done very well, is a little bit pointless in our opinion. Yeah. If you're buying a bike from a shop, then you've not got to worry about routing the wires anyway. And if you're building up the bike from the frame, then you've still got the brake hoses to route. So you're not really saving yourself much of a yeah, job. Yeah, a, a DI2 cable is not going to be the most challenging thing. If you, no, that's if normally the easy capable, one, isn't it? Yeah, if you're capable of building mm. up a bike from a frame. So. The real reason that this has been done is so that shop assistants can sell bikes with fancy sounding wireless gears, yeah. we think. You can also use it to impress your non-cycling friends at the pub, I guess. Away from our gripes about wireless, the rear derailleur is now the brains of the system. It's in here where you'll find um, all of the functionality of the old Junction A box. And as a result, you'll need to reach down there to enter adjustment mode. That's fine if you're working on your bike in a stand, um, but if you're out for a ride with gears that are just slightly off, you'll need to stop riding to adjust them. Oh, I'd like to see you try. I, uh, yeah, no, it's not happening. Maybe that's the next video. No. Comment below if you want Liam to adjust his gears on the go. What is good about all of this is that there is now no need to buy a Bluetooth DFly unit to allow you to connect your gears to your phone or bike computer. Shimano's app is easy to use and it allows you to swap the functions of the shifter buttons, change the shifting modes and switch between fast, normal and slow shifting speeds. You can also do any updates from here and from my experience, it's much more stable than before, I'd have to say. I just really begrudged paying that yeah. 50 quid for a little Bluetooth it's module. Ridiculous. However, the biggest thing that you need to know about Ultegra is that more than ever, there's absolutely no difference in performance between this and Durace. We've ridden both extensively, and the only way that you're going to be able to tell the difference <laughs> is that Durace will make you poorer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, there is yeah. a bit of a weight difference. 200 grams though, like, if, if you're not a world-class climber, that's just not going to make a difference. No, absolutely not. Focus on aero if you're gonna do that. If you exactly. wanna go faster. Yeah, or go for a poo before leaving. Let's not put that in. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, my conclusion that it is absolutely pointless for a non-professional rider to be using Durace. Ultegra 12 speed is just too good. And if you wanna see some bikes that actually feature Durace, the bikes that won the tour video is good. That's just a collection mm. of insanely expensive bikes. Yeah, so right. a round of applause for Shimano. They've basically killed their Dura Race group set because the Ultegra one's so good. Yeah, top bombing Shimano. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.